Hey sitters, welcome back to another great video. If you're new here, I'm Lydia and I give great tips and tricks on how to become a better babysitter. So hit that subscribe button to stick around. Today's topic is how to put the baby to bed, but not only just the babies, the kids, because that's our job. I also want to thank Grace for asking this awesome question. So bedtime can be such a stressful situation and time if you and the kids are not prepared. So when it comes to babies, you can't really prepare them. You can't tell them, okay, bedtime's in an hour, bedtime's in 30 minutes, okay, five minutes till bed. They don't get it. So what the number one important rule when it comes to putting babies to bed is sticking to their routine. So you need to ask mom and dad, what is their routine? Because some like to be rocked, some like to be bounced, some like to be swayed, some like to be just left in the crib and for you to walk away. Some sleep with sound at night, like white noise. Some sleep with a nightlight, some, like there's, when it comes to babies, routine is important. So I had a baby one time that I was trying to put to bed and I didn't ask mom and dad what the routine was. I just thought, yo, everybody, everybody just, lays in a rocking chair and, and rocks them to sleep. That's how you put a baby to bed. Wrong, not this child. This child liked to be swayed and bounced at the same time. I felt like I was on a dance floor doing a, a, a crazy dance routine because it was so detailed on how you had to do it for him to be soothed and then put in his crib. And then it's not like you, you completely have him fall asleep in your arms. It's halfway till he's fallen asleep and then he falls asleep the rest in his crib. Some kids do get rocked in a, rock, a rocking chair and they fall asleep in your arms and you can move them to the crib, no problem. I have a little girl who loves bedtime. She doesn't want you to rock her. She doesn't want you to sway her. She just wants to be put in the bed and for you to walk out and leave the room altogether. So babies can be very different when it comes to putting them to bed. Um, and it just all comes down to you asking mom and dad what their routine is. And on top of that, there might be two different routines. Dad might be doing it one way and mom might be doing it the other way. So you kind of get to choose between the two, but my, my biggest tip is to ask who puts the baby to bed the most because I would stick with that routine. So if mom does it the most, stick to that routine because the baby goes through that routine more. Um, Moving on to kiddos. So kids are, they're also in routine, but not the same routine as a baby. Babies stick to it. Kids don't always stick to routine. Um, even though it might be structured, it can be loose in what you're doing. So for example, um, a couple of my kids do outside time. They come in, get a bath, they read, and then they go to bed. But the activities that happen outside can be different. It could be swimming, it could be bike riding, it could be, so schedules, like they can be flexible on what you're doing, but the structure still kind of has to go the same. Um, I've had kids that I have to sit in bed with um, until they fall asleep. I don't like doing it, but it's, if that's what needs to happen, then we do it. Um, and I give a warning, I give an hour warning I give a half hour warning, I give a five minute warning so that they know I'm serious that it is going to be bedtime when I say it's bedtime. That way they get to prepare and they get to do those last minute, oh, I need a drink or oh, I need to go to the bathroom, which I make sure they do all before they go to bed. I give them a drink, they go to the bathroom, they go to bed. Those are my last couple steps because those excuses can go all night long. So if I just give it to them before they even get into bed or think about getting into bed, it's not an excuse they can have. Now, if the kids don't have a routine, if mom and dad don't have a routine for these kiddos, that's fine. Make one yourself. So what I mean by that is say I babysit a little boy who's four and mom and dad don't usually have a routine. He just goes to bed at a certain time every night and there's no routine beforehand. What I usually do is implement my own routine. So I ask mom and dad if it's okay that I give him bath and that we do outside time beforehand, um, just so I know that I'm okay, it's okay for me to give him bath. And my routine is usually what I just talked about. We go outside, we play, we get all our energy out. We come inside, we take a bath and brush our teeth, and then we read a book and we go to bed. 
That's the routine that I, I, if there isn't a routine, I implement. That way, every time I come to the house, that four-year-old knows, okay, this is our, the beginning of our routine for bed, and he can't complain when he gets to there, to, gets, gets to bedtime, because he knows it's coming. So, um, if they don't have a routine, you implement one yourself, and they, they start to understand, okay, when Miss So-and-so comes to the house to babysit me, these are the things we do, and so, kind of make it special, try to put a special twist on it, so they get excited about you coming over and going through that routine. Here's a little tip I learned over the years as well. It is very comforting to children when I say the words or something along the line of, hey, when mom and dad get home, I'll tell them to come in and check on you. Or hey, when mom and dad come home, I'll let them know that you said goodnight and I love you. Just so the kids feel like they're not completely just going to bed and not having that connection with mom and dad. I kind of, for my younger ones, they try and stay up until mom and dad come home, but I know that they're not gonna last, so I just use that phrase of, hey, when mom and dad come home, I'll have them coming in and say goodnight. And it, they usually fall asleep with, within 20 minutes because they're not, they're not trying to stay up waiting for mom and dad. They know that mom and dad will come in. And some mom and dads don't do it. Some mom and dads do go in and wake them up to say goodnight. Um, it just depends on the family, but it does, it is comforting to children for you, them to hear that. If you guys have any questions about anything I talked about, um, about bedtime, about kids, babies, let me know down in the comment section below. I know bedtime can be stressful for both you and the kid. Um, it is a very stressful time, but it doesn't have to be. If you're prepared, if they're prepared, if you make it fun, make it a routine, um, you gotta just... Do what you do because you do it best and put them to bed. Follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. It'll be in the description below. If you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button for more tips and tricks on how to become a better babysitter. Thank you guys so much for your support and watching these videos. I truly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video.